Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome again to Departures Lounge. Um, it's been a beautiful, another beautiful week in Victoria, British Columbia. Um, I'm Kathy Larson, co-owner of Departures Travel in Sydney, and with us today is my business partner, Kathy, uh, in the Sydney office, and she also has the Oak Bay office. And um, we have a fantastic guest for us today. We're so excited. Yes, Darcy, we're welcome to um, Departures Lounge. First time you've been on with us today. So Darcy Guadars. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Okay, so much. I got it. <laughs> Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. I'm really excited to get started and talk a little bit about one of my favorite places in the whole entire world, not just Canada. That's really exciting. It's actually somewhere that um, I've been looking at possibly taking a group of women for my niche women's tours. And, and we know from the uh, from the travel agency side of things, Kathy Larson has been um, saying that she would love to do this one too, because Kathy and I were both together up in Yellowknife a couple of years ago and experienced some of the beautiful tundra and snow. And it was just absolutely magical. And of course, what's missing there is the, the polar bears and the uh, Beluga. So we'll hear more about that from you today. Absolutely. It's a once in a lifetime experience. And I can't imagine a better time than right now to be visiting the idea of not only exploring Churchill, but all kinds of places in Canada, our own backyard, for several reasons. Um, I think probably the number one reason, pretty obvious, you know that we're, we're a little bit restricted right now. And so as the borders slowly open up within Canada to pro province to province, it allows us to explore our own backyard. And there's going to be less international guests coming in, so less crowds, Canadian dollar, which is always our, <laughs> to our advantage, we love that. So I think it's a really great time to consider um, those bucket list trips like Churchill, Manitoba at this time. And we get Absolutely. people that travel all over the world that come here and we just take it for granted. And, you know, it's in our own backyard. That's right. So do you mind if I start by telling you a little bit about Anderson Vacations, the organization that I work with? Fabulous. Oh, Okay, perfect. So we are a Canadian company and we're Calgary based. So I think that after all of this going on, it's never been a better time than to shop local. So of course, working with Departures Travel is an absolute privilege for Anderson Vacations. We truly value our partnership, working with your team of professionals. Um, I can't stress enough to your clients how important it is um, to, to work with a travel professional like yourselves. Um, so we've been in business for over 26 years. And uh, as I mentioned, we're Calgary based. Uh, I actually live on the island as well. I'm in Nanaimo, so I'm in BC. And um, our specialty really is all of Canada. But today I'm gonna focus a little bit on uh, this one particular special place. So I'll get started with my little PowerPoint and you can jump in anytime if you have questions or comments. How does that sound? Great. Fantastic. Okay. So there's a photo of me. And that was before I started to get my roots, my COVID roots. <laughs> so I guess we have a little bit of that going on. I am the director of business development for Anderson Vacations. In my previous life, I was actually a travel uh, consultant as well, but I've been in the industry for over 32 years. My passion, of course, lies within travel and our own backyard because Canada is such a spectacular place. How do you get to Churchill, Manitoba? Well, you've got to stop in Winnipeg on the way up there. And from Winnipeg to Churchill, there's a couple of ways to get there. So from Winnipeg, um, what I recommend that I think is a great way to travel is to fly one way and to take via rail the other way. It's a great combination. Um, the flying is quick. It's only about two and a half hours. The train is about 48 hours, so a little bit longer, but I'm a romantic and taking via rail is one of my favorite things to do. And it really is truly like stepping back in time. So when I said that you've got to start in Winnipeg, well, you know what, I'm going to tell you a few little really special things about Winnipeg because it's one of my hometowns. I grew up in Alberta, but I did spend about 25 years in Winnipeg and it truly ha has a special place in my heart. It's known for so many things um, and it's just most recently really starting to get the recognition it deserves for all the wonderful things like the arts an incredible food scene, fabulous restaurants. Of course, Winnie the Pooh is from Winnipeg and um, the famous Winnipeg Jets. And it's really funny because uh, years ago, I used to go to the Winnipeg Jets games all the time. I have not been since they've come back to Winnipeg, but we're super proud. 
And if we have any ex-Winnipeggers who are on the call today, they might recognize Morden's chocolates, which are world yeah. famous, fabulous chocolates from Winnipeg. Um, once you start uh, your journey in Winnipeg, I do recommend at least one night, preferably two to be honest, because there's quite a few things to do in Winnipeg. The Exchange District is this lovely area um, right downtown. It's a historic area, so a lot of the buildings have all the old signs painted on the sides from long, long ago. Um, you know, the little candy signs and things, all the old businesses. And it's really about the dining, the nightlife and fabulous little boutique shopping. So you get your shopping fix there. But what's really famous in Winnipeg is the Forks Market. And it's this fabulous meeting place. Um, it's in the center where the two rivers join, the Red River and the Assiniboine River. And it's full of really incredible um, food, little restaurants, food court style. Um, there's even a central area where you can grab a beer or a cider. And um, it really is mixing with uh, the locals while you're there. Lots of buskers and things like that. And lots of wonderful little shops to visit as well. It's a must see. And right while you're in the Forks, within walking distance is the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. And this is an absolutely incredible uh, museum. It is world-class. Um, it's the only museum in the world that's actually dedicated to human rights awareness and education. Uh, walking through this, um, this building is spectacular. You start at the bottom and go to the very top to the Tower of Light. And uh, people come from all over the world to see this. So it's a must see while visiting Winnipeg. And since you're on your way to Churchill, <laughs> why not get a little taste of these cute cuddly guys up close and personal. So Journey to Churchill is a, an exhibit that's at the Cinnaboyne Park Zoo. And um, if you get there at feeding time, you can actually look up there in this glass tunnel and you can look up and the, you can see the size of the bear paws right above you. Absolutely amazing. And it's not just the polar bears, but there's all kinds of wildlife that are featured in Churchill that you can see at this particular exhibition. It's really amazing. Also the legislative buildings with the golden boy on top. Um, there's some great history here and um, there's this it's a hermetic code. It's a big long, I can't get into too much detail about that, but it's really worth looking into. You can spend some time taking a, a walking tour of the legislative building and learning about this code. There's all kinds of symbols and things hidden throughout the building. So if you remember the Da Vinci Code and you're interested in that book, it's definitely worth um, checking into. Winnipeg is known for its festivals and there's a fantastic one called Festival de Voyageur that um, celebrates the French culture in Winnipeg. One of my favorite things is the snow carvings or ice carvings. Every once in a while, um, they do have a melt and it all melts down in February. It's hard to believe, but if you get lucky, you get to see this incredible um, festival and it's really about the celebrating French culture, music, cuisine, and so on. It's fabulous. And then Folklorama, it's the largest and longest running multicultural festival in the world. So it's great. So if you're a traveler and, and right now it would be perfect because we could all use that little taste of all these different countries. And it's really focused on the culture, the food. And there's, I believe there's a, over 40 pavilions and they're located all over the city. You can go to each of the pavilions and you even have a passport that you can get stamped at each of the pavilions. And that usually takes place in August. Okay, well, this is like the best kept secret in the whole entire oh. world. <laughs> Who knew that Winnipeg, Manitoba had such a spectacular spa? It's a Nordic spa. If you've been to Whistler, you may have experienced the Scandinavian spa there. Um, have, Kathy, have you been up there, either of you? Yes. Okay, well, it's very similar to those spas, not in the mountains, of course, but you will feel in, like you're in another, another place in the world. Absolutely beautiful. And they have um, not only the hot and cold pools, they actually have an experience where they have a towel ceremony, which I think is just amazing. So you're sitting in the sauna and um, they come out and they, they do a, they play like music from like Lord of the Lord of the Rings, really loud. And they, they whip you with towels and not, not you personally, but hot air. <laughs> it's just amazing. It's quite an experience. I would definitely not miss that. Now let's jump into the reason we're all here tonight is to celebrate this wonderful, magical place called Churchill, Manitoba. I have had the privilege to be there twice, in, uh, once in each season. So in the summer, in the 
fall. There's actually three seasons, summer, fall, those are the main seasons. And then there's a little bit of a winter season as well. And you wouldn't see the polar bears at that time, but it's still worthwhile. So um, just to give you an idea about Churchill, it is um, the polar, pardon me, the polar bear capital of the world, as most of you know, but it's also the beluga whale capital of the world. So it has two titles, which makes it very, very special. One thing to note about Churchill, Manitoba, it is illegal to do something there. It's illegal to lock the doors of your car. It's against the law. I'm sure you didn't know that. No. So yeah, if you, um, if you live there, you cannot lock the doors on your car because there always has to be an escape route. For, uh, for all locals and visitors too, um, just in case, because every once in a while, a polar bear um, might just happen into town. And if they do, I'll show you what happens in a minute. In Churchill itself, it's just a small town. There isn't a ton to see in Churchill, but this museum, the It's, an, uh, it's Antique Pack Museum, formerly known as the Eskimo Museum, is an amazing little spot. It's not very large, but there are so many incredible artifacts in here and artworks, they're just beautiful. If you're in, interested in carvings and things like that and seeing you know, the polar bear, the muskox, it is a must see. And I believe you can enter this by donation. So um, it's really amazing. And there's even a little bookstore in there and some um, paintings and artwork that you can purchase. Also, um, there's a great stop and you can do these during whether you're there in the summer or of course in the winter or fall. Um, Prince of Wales Fort is another stop that is really interesting. It's a national historic site. It's got lots of history and it's been there for a very long time and it was originally built to protect and control Hudson Bay's company's um, interest in the fur trade. So there's a lot of really good stories um, and it really is about the storytelling at this and uh, one of the interesting things that happened when I was there there was um, some local indigenous ladies outside of the fort and they were cooking over an open fire they were cooking bannock so we had the opportunity to um, not only watch them cook it but sample it afterwards so that was really really neat okay so this is what happens to those bad polar bears <laughs> the ones that happen to wander into town there is actually a polar bear jail in Churchill um, so they are taken there if they wander into town. They, they put them in there for about 30 days. They do not give them any food or water for 30 days um, because they want to teach them that it's not okay to come back into town. And then after that 30 days, um, they take them out. They do take them out and release them in the wild again. They, they don't hurt them. But um, it's a fairly successful program from what I, from what I know, but kind of neat to see that. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Churchill in the summertime. Uh, we were talking earlier, Kathy, about this photo. I love this photo. With the wildflowers. And of course, when you go to Churchill, you are looking for polar bears. Usually that's the number one reason why you're going. Summertime, you will see polar bears in most cases. But if polar bears are what you're really going for, I would recommend the fall, October, November. But there's lots of other reasons why you should go in the summertime. One being the polar bears, the wildflowers are absolutely spectacular. So to get a photograph like this is an absolute gift. Mm -hmm. Lots of other wildlife as well in the summertime. So for photographers, it's fantastic. Um, it's, it's just a really um, unique, diverse place to be. Uh, the raw nature is the best way to describe it. And I actually had the privilege of seeing bears just like this. Um, when you're going out to see the beluga whales, you actually get to go on a boat, of course. And um, we were fortunate enough to have a mama and her baby swimming right by our boat. We were laying on our stomachs with our cameras, ready to go with our zoom lenses. I did not need a zoom lens, let me tell you. The bears were that close. It was spectacular. So it really is quite raw and um, it's almost surreal to see them that close. Love this shot because uh, it really can be that casual. You can just be quite relaxed. And the fact that his, you know, his paws and so on are, are dirty. Sometimes the polar bears aren't all in the summertime as white as you would expect them to be because they've been rolling around in the dust a little bit, you know, keeping the bugs off and that kind of thing. But they're just adorable. Now, this is really one of the best reasons to go to Churchill in the summertime, to see these canaries of the ocean. Now they are beluga whales, of course, and they're one of the friendliest creatures of the ocean. And there's many ways that you can see them. You can do kayaking, you can go into a zodiac, 
um, stand up paddle board. You can no longer snorkel with them. There is an opportunity now, it has, it's called um, gliding. I think it's called water gliding, where you can lay on an, a mattress and be, they drag you behind the boat and you can put your face in the water with a little mask and the whales will come close if you're lucky. I'm gonna quickly tell you my favorite story ever that I have about um, my experience with the Belugas. I'll jump to this slide. Um, so when I was there in the summertime, I went with um, a friend and we went out the first day to go sea kayaking. And it was incredibly exciting, one of the most amazing experiences. And the guide that took us, which is fantastic, you have a personal guide that takes you and explains everything so you know that that's a mama, the white one, and you know that that's a baby, the gray one, as they come to the surface. And so he could sense how excited I was to be there. And it's a lot of rowing. And the person I was rowing with, she wasn't doing a lot of rowing. I was doing the most of the rowing. So the next morning, the guide said to me, you know, I, I saw how excited you were yesterday. Would you like to join us again today? So I said, absolutely, I would die to do that. So I snuck out of my room first thing in the morning while my partner was sleeping. And I went down to the, the ocean with the, with the guide, got in the kayak, with a, it's a brand new group. So they're nice and fresh. I hadn't uh, used my upper arms for quite some time. And so my upper body strength wasn't the best. Well, now this morning when I get in the canoe, uh, the kayak, I can't hardly lift my arms. So I couldn't possibly keep up with the rest of the group. So I said, can you go and do, I feel really bad I'm holding you up. And he said, okay, I'll let you stay here, but you got to promise you stay right here. You don't go anywhere. So they all took off in their kayaks and I sat by myself. And I had read before I went to Churchill that if you sing to the belugas, they will come. Well, there was no one around and I'm the world's worst singer. <laughs> so I was by myself and I thought, this is it, this is my chance. So I belted out my favorite song from The Sound of Music. I don't know where that came from, but I belted out my favorite song. And sure enough, sure enough, the whales started to come. And oh my gosh. I surfaced beside my kayak. A beluga whale came from behind and started to nudge the back of Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was not only, it was, it was the most terrifying experience and the most exciting experience I think I've ever had in my life. It was beautiful. I was crying, you know, it was just, and there was no one to share. And, you know, I had a phone and a thing. I didn't even take a video. I just was so in the moment. And that's what travel is all about. So I just loved it. It's really worthwhile. Um, let's talk a little bit about Churchill in the fall and in the winter. So primarily for polar bears, yeah, the fall is the best time to go, but there is a, a, another winter experience as well. Okay, so if you're coming from a warm destination and you're gonna go to Churchill, Manitoba in the fall, it gets a little bit chilly up there. We're gonna call you a chill seeker because that's what you gotta be to go up there. But you know what, it's not that bad because we actually have access to outerwear um, clothing rentals. So um, they're not exactly this color. I think the ones up there are maybe blue. Some of them might be like this, but they are Canada goose that they rent up there. So they're the warmest Baffin boots, very warm. You've got the toques, the mitts, everything. You're completely outfitted. So when you start your journey, um, and, and in fact, we can make this arrangements. I believe that the clothing can be waiting for you when you arrive in Winnipeg at your hotel. And then when you get up there, you can start enjoying the outdoors without having to even think about the cold weather. This is truly, um, if you can just take a look at this picture and feel what it's like to be on the tundra and just see the mist coming off in the morning. It is really mystical, magical. And there's something you have a feeling inside that I, I don't know if you can find this anywhere else in the world. Um, but it's not just the polar bears. And one of the things I learned when I went up there was I thought that I was going to get there and there was going to be polar bears everywhere. Well, if there was polar bears everywhere, it wouldn't be that much fun, would it? They're a little bit elusive. And I think that's part of the um, journey is really searching out for these animals. So not only the polar bears, but the Arctic fox or the ptarmigan. So you kind of each day start your journey looking for these, uh, this, this wildlife. It's beautiful. So why would you um, reach out to your travel professional to talk about a trip to Churchill? Because there's a lot of ways that you can go to Churchill and experience it. And it's really important to deal with a travel professional like the, the agents at uh, Departures Travel who work very closely with Anderson Vacations. And we work together to put together the perfect package for you because everyone has a different reason why they want to experience Churchill. So I'm going to break that down for you just a little bit. Now, 
um, whether it's summertime or wintertime that you're thinking of going, both are fabulous times. And all of the different products and partners that we work with do um, summer experiences and they also do winter experiences or fall experiences. It really depends on what you're looking for. If accommodation is extremely important to you and that you want to go there and, and experience um, a local, really comfortable sort of rustic lodge, this is one of my go-to um, partners that we would work with called Lazy Bear Lodge. Um, this lodge, just as you can see in the pictures, very rustic, really comfortable, warm, and it's located right in Churchill. So from Churchill, it's a, uh, this is for me, one of my favorites for a summertime experience. It's just a few minutes away from the um, Churchill estuary where the whales come in, over 4,000 whales come in there annually. Um, there's about 57,000 that comes, come into Hudson Bay, but about 4,000 that come in close. And so it's very convenient for that. They have, um, Lazy Bear Lodge has this incredible restaurant. I think I do have a slide, Oops, sorry. Something else is coming up here. Um, I love this because uh, the dining here, for me, dining is a very large part of my experience. So what's really great about this place is at the end of the day, I don't know what it is about cold weather, but it makes you hungry. So at the end of the day, when you sit down for a meal, it's a nice hearty meal. They use Arctic char, um, local, uh, you know, bison, things like that. Um, which is fantastic. It's cozy. It's authentic. One thing to note, though, it is important for some people who like to have a glass of wine with dinner. They do not serve any alcohol at this lodge, but they do serve these lovely non-alcoholic cocktails that are um, sparkly beverages that are fantastic and you wouldn't even know that you missed it. If you did want to have a beverage, you can go into across the street down to a small pub to have that there. But this is one of my favorite experiences if accommodation is really important to you. And they do winter product as well as, pardon me, fall product as well as summer product. Fantastic. Um, but if you really want to get out on the tundra, this is a really unique experience. Another partner that we work with is called Frontiers North. And this is the winter product that I went on. And so you spend most of your time in the day on a tundra buggy out in on the tundra. Um, what's great about this is you're actually sleeping on the tundra as well. So you don't have to go back into town. Whereas if you're staying at Lazy Bear Lodge, at the end of each day, you have to make your way back into the lodge, back into town in the wintertime. Whereas here you're staying out on the tundra. It's one trip out at the beginning and then one trip back in the return. This is a fantastic picture of what the buggy's like. You can be inside where it's nice and warm or on the back of the tundra buggy looking down at the polar bears. Um, so imagine this, <laughs> looking out your window. <laughs> Good morning. Nose looking back at you. This is an incredible experience and uh, this is not that uncommon um, to be able to see them up this close and um, you definitely wanna have your best camera there. So if you can see in the background behind the bears, that is the tundra buggy sort of almost community out on the tundra. So those um, tundra buggies are all linked together. So you don't actually um, walk on the ground in this particular package. You're on, during the day, you're on tundra buggies that move around and go searching for the bears. But at night you do sleep in these buggies and there's a dining buggy and there's a lounge car as well. So it's quite an interesting experience. Um, when you wake up in the morning, um, you have breakfast in the dining car and then they take you from there and they put you on your mobile buggy to go in search of wildlife. Now you're gone from about nine o'clock in the morning till about four in the afternoon. So you do have your meal, your afternoon lunch meal on the, on the buggy. There is washroom facilities on the buggy. And um, at the end of the day, around four o'clock, when you come back, there's usually two buggies out at the same time, which is really exciting because the other buggy, buggy might be seeing things that you're not seeing. So at four o'clock, you all meet in the lounge and then you share all your stories. So there's this sense of community when you, get, when you finish your, your day out on the tundra, the sense of community over a glass of wine and a few appetizers before your dinner starts. So it's really a unique, unique experience. Now this is where you're gonna sleep out on the tundra. So this may not be for everybody, but I gotta tell you, it is quite an incredible experience. So this is the sleeping, um, I guess, car, you would call it. And what's, it's, it looks like it's wide open to everyone, but there is in fact two curtains that separate you. There's a curtain, uh, a smaller curtain, and then a heavier curtain that's soundproofing. Now it is not 100% soundproof. Um, so they do actually give you some earplugs, which is kind of, 
and, and it sleeps about 20 people. Um, you know, if you have mobility issues and you're not comfortable with going up to the second bunk, you can request the lower bunks. Um, but if you do, um, if you're traveling by yourself, there is a possibility that there will be someone above you on the upper bunk. So you need to be aware of that. Um, so I, I do recommend this for people who are fairly mobile when they're traveling. Really unique because when you wake up in the morning and you look out that window, there could be a polar bear outside. So it's quite unique. I love the, the uh, Hudson Bay blankets. It really gives a nice cozy feel to it. And this is the buggy at night. Isn't that spectacular? Amazing. And so um, the, before you get to the Northern Lights, you actually get these spectacular sunsets. And I, I cannot find the photograph I have, but I have the most beautiful photograph um, of a, a sunset that I've ever seen in my entire life and the way it lights up. And you really feel this sense of community as I mentioned before. If you're fortunate enough to see a polar bear and a baby, I don't know if there's anything more exciting and lovely and wonderful than that, but that's definitely a possibility when you're on the tundra. As I mentioned, you are on the buggy during the day, so if you have a great camera, you want to bring that camera along. And um, there were people on there with camera lenses that were this long, and all I could hear was doo -doo 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 -doo, taking thousands of pictures because it's you don't want to miss that perfect shot. Um, and you are, it's very it's very comfortable on the buggy during the day. And like I said, at the end of the day, you do end up back on the other buggy. And you're out there for anywhere from three to four days uh, on the tundra. That's another great shot of the buggy at night. Okay, so um, before I get into another product, I do want to mention Frontiers North has a brand new product. If you're looking toward a Churchill and you, uh, it's not about the bears, but you really want to experience the Northern Lights, there's a brand new product. It's called Northern Lights and Winter Lights. So for anyone who might be based out of Alberta, um, there is, there's actually ch a charter flight this March 2021 that goes from Calgary to Churchill directly um, for a two-night program. And what's really exciting about this program, Megan is an employee that works for me and she's this fabulous, fabulous, one of our frontline staff. And so she books a lot of Churchill. She works very closely with our agency partners because her passion lies within Churchill. And that's what's really important is that our staff are really worth what, what they, uh, they do. There's something called Dan's Diner where you have your dinner out on the um, tundra. And it's a five course gourmet meal with a glass top overlooking, uh, looking up at the Northern Lights. So Darcy, what is the um, the best time to go to see the, the Northern Lights? Like, we want everything when we go, of course. <laughs> well, do, I, most people don't even know this, but Churchill is the third best place in the world to see the Northern Lights. You can actually see them um, over 300 days per year. So wow. well, any time is a good time to go, but the peak time, um, the utmost peak time would be January, February, March. So it's similar to other Northern destinations in Canada. That is definitely the best time to go. Um, as far as one other experience I'd like to get into for you, sometimes if you um, are a photographer and you would like to get that perfect shot of a polar bear, it is um, a little different being on the back of a tundra buggy looking down at the bears and taking that shot. There's an opportunity with one of our incredible partners um, called Churchill Wild for the photographer where you are on the ground with the polar bears. Believe it or not, you are actually on the ground. So um, Churchill Wild has three very unique remote lodges. Um, we have Nanook, Seal River Lodge, and Diamond Lake Lodge. Um, and so they're all very different. They're very similar. They're very different, um, different distances out of Churchill. In my opinion, it's not really about which lodge you choose. It's based on what experience you're looking for. And each of these lodges, um, Seal River Lodge on the very bottom, you can see it's on the water. It's fantastic for beluga whales. They're right at the estuary where all kinds of whales come in. So it's fantastic, but they have a great winter program with polar bears as well. The top right hand corner, Nanook, is really about the polar bears and they have polar bear dens there. So if you're interested in seeing a polar bear with uh, the mama bear and a baby, that may be the right lodge for you. And then Diamond Lake Lodge is also another lodge that's fantastic for polar bears. So what we do is we work with the departures, travel um, consultants to find the perfect product for you. And we would match up our photographer guests with this kind of product because it really is special. You are absolutely up close and personal. Now in this photograph, you're in the compound that does have a fence around it, but there are many cases where you're out in the tundra and there is no fence at all. So they are definitely armed uh, with protective equipment. They have never in, I think it's been over 20 years, ever had an incident or had any injuries to anyone, 
polar bears or people, they are very, very well prepared. Um, it's very safe and an absolutely incredible experience. Okay, so before I get to this, um, I, I always throw a recipe in because that bannock that I had was so fabulous. I always throw a recipe. So if people want to take a photograph of this, Kathy and Kathy, I can, I can send this out to you. You can send it out to yeah. your guests. Did you have any questions so far with regards to what I've talked about? No. Um, when can we go? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It is might, we, we might need to do a Kathy and Kathy expedition trip just to check it, it sounds out. Sounds like for... you need to go three times in the year. Yeah, yeah you, you pretty much do need to go three times <laughs> in the year. And it's interesting because the summer is so different than the fall and the winter time. And it really depends on what you're looking for in the experience. So it isn't, I, I think I called it a once in a lifetime opportunity, but really. It's more than that, because if you go up in the summertime, you've really got to go back in the, in the fall or winter as well. Um, and I will, I will send this recipe to you, um, to both of you, Kathy's, and, um, and you can send it off to the guests, because if, if you're interested in trying this, it, we're getting into summer season. So if you're going to be cooking over an open fire, what a fabulous thing to do. Mm -hmm. Let me just see if I have any other slides. Yeah, and that's one of my favorite photographs. But yeah, no, I'm thrilled to have had the opportunity to talk with you. And if there's any other questions, you know, please let me know. And I'll always, uh, if someone reaches out to me directly, I'll always send them back to you, um, to your consultants and, and get you started with them. Fantastic. Well, this has been so, uh, so eye opening. I actually was already excited about doing this. And I have been looking at this for a couple of years, I think since Kathy and I were in um, Yellowknife, and I just was so inspired. And then I was in the Arctic myself, um, doing a, an Arctic expedition a few years ago. And, and I just, I have to say, we live in the most spectacular country in the world. And there's so little of it that we actually see. So this is just a really wonderful way of, of experiencing it. So if you had to start with one, Darcy, and you could only go in one season for the first year, which would be your choice? Well, that's a really tough question. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an ocean whale girl. Like I really, I really have some special place in my heart for whales. And I'm so grateful that I live on Vancouver Island because when I'm on the ferries this spring before um, the, everything has sort of gone a little bit south on us, um, I was going back and forth to Vancouver a lot. And I couldn't believe how often I got to see the orcas and um, pods of dolphins. So that always draws me in. So I'm definitely a summertime girl. But there, there's something about the fall in particular. I would say if you're a polar bear person, and that's your experience. If you're looking for the polar bears, it's the fall. Um, a couple of years ago when I did the fall experience, I took my husband with me. And, um, you know, for him, it was almost a life-changing experience. I had mentioned to you earlier, he's from South America. He's from Ecuador. And we were in this, in this photo that you can see there. That's not us, but it was similar to this. The bears had come up like that. And there's at the very back of the um, tundra buggy, there's a, a grill. It's an open air grill. So you're standing on it. And you can look through the grill to see the polar bears. And my husband knelt down on one knee and he exhaled. Like, and you could see the exhale, you know, the frost come out of his mouth. I don't know whatever possessed him to do this or how he thought of it. But when he exhaled out, the bear caught his scent. And they were nose to nose with the grill and they were looking into each other's eyes and there was a, a lady standing beside and she was just in tears she was just it was such a magical moment that you couldn't plan it just happened so naturally so i think if you're a polar bear person um october november is definitely the time that i would go first okay. i think i think for me it would be the polar bears for sure i, I mean the belugas are amazing i've seen them and and so so fabulous but being an island girl we do have that opportunity to be on the ocean more so I think I would start with the polar bears myself. What about you, Kathy? I'm honestly, I think I would have to go back a couple of times because I was looking at all those different hotels and I'm going, oh, I'd like to stay there and, and there. So I probably do a, a February trip and, a, and another trip in the, in the fall. But right now we right now we do all of it. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I think we're gonna deprive. So exactly. uh, Darcy, what kind of um, protocols do you have in place for uh, the post-COVID travel? Well, um, you know what? It's, it's been really exciting. I was saying earlier before we did this presentation, um, people, are, people are really excited about getting back at it, getting back, back at travel. So at this point now, um, people are starting to put deposits down. Most of the availability, um, I, I'm not sure exactly when the programs are going to start again. 
hopefully for October, November of this year, and hopefully they won't have to have had any cancellation. So that means they're probably pretty busy. So your uh, viewers would be looking most likely at next fall, and now would be the time to start considering putting a deposit down. So we are pretty much up and running, back at it, and it's been really exciting. We, we got a booking last week for um, the Churchill Wild on the ground experience, and you know, it was really interesting because it was a lady who um, was at a, a webinar just like this one, the presentation and she said um, she was in her 70s and she said I thought about Churchill for so long and I, I kept putting it on the back burner because I kept thinking I gotta go far I gotta you know well I can I gotta travel far 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 and she said no enough is enough now is the time so she made her reservation for Churchill which was really exciting for us to know that people are just they're ready to get back at it yes. Sounds that's great classic. Well, thank you so much, Darcy, for taking the time to come and chat with us today. We're really excited about the prospect of sending some of our clients with you on, on your um, wonderful journeys and, of course, experiencing it ourselves. And um, so we'll wrap up for today. But um, our next week's Departures Lounge uh, presenter is Dave Pinnell. And Dave comes to us from West Coast Expeditions, and he runs a beautiful um, another signature Canadian experience and it's something I did last summer and I'm, I'm hoping to still do this summer again because it was just so magical and we stay in glamping tents on a very small island called Spring Island and it's uh, well known for the sea otters and uh, First Nations um, come onto the island with us and we have a fantastic potlatch it's just it's just fantastic so if um, if anybody wants to come and join us next week same time same place we will be here and uh, we look forward to welcoming you again. And again, Darcy, thanks so much and look forward to seeing you soon in person. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Thanks, Darcy. Bye, everyone. Bye for now.